live at Utah Hogel Zoo. It will begin soon. Stay with us. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining us. Gather the kids, get the neighbors. We got a real cool Facebook field trip for you today. You're not going to want to miss this one. Who loves bears? There's a hint. We'll tell you which kind here in a bit. Join us. Yay. All right. Starting soon, another Facebook field trip. If you can't hear, let us know. Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. If not, let us know. As always, we appreciate your comments and questions, especially from the younger tykes. If you have a birthday, love to give you a shout out. Happy May Day, everyone, by the way. First day of May. How about that? Okay. Okay, we're just about ready to go. Greetings, one and all. I'm Brad. I'm in the marketing department. Got my uh, cohort here, Jeff, handling all things behind the camera. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We sure appreciate all you guys tuning in. We love you all. Hey, bit of news. If you haven't heard, we're opening tomorrow. How about that? That's a big piece of news. So come on up to the zoo if you get a chance. We're going to be open every day. Of course, with restrictions, we strongly encourage the use of masks and such. But let's get right into what we're going to be doing today. Got a special guest with us from the animal care team, a keeper here at Rocky Shores. Janine, welcome. Thank Hi. you for joining us. Hi, how are you? So we got our camera trained on these guys. What are we looking at? All right, so these are our grizzlies. Uh, Coda is the bear right in the front, and he is in front of a deer carcass. Uh, and our two girls, Lulu and Dolly, are the bears in the back with the produce. Um, today, our bears are getting something a little bit special. Um, they are getting a deer. So here at the zoo, we do some carcass feeding or some whole foods feeding. And oh. Coda is really excited Coda. Uh, about that deer carcass. And he is taking that into one of the shelters. Uh, Dolly's going to come towards us and check everybody out. We've got some people on the other side of the fence watching uh, from our animal care and veterinary department. And then she's also got some snacks all the way around the exhibit. Uh, so in front of this window, we have some of their regular diet to give everybody a chance to eat during this time. Uh, we've got some of their ground protein. Um, it's a meat product that's made for zoo animals. And then we've got some of their chow. So we have bear chow um, and some other chow. Uh, it's actually dog food. Uh, it's called TD. It's good for their teeth. It gives them a little bit of variety and provides some vitamins for them. Oh, that's interesting. And then in the back, you can see some produce. Uh, we give them different kinds of produce throughout the day. Grizzly bears are omnivores. Uh, so that means they eat everything. Uh, our bears get produce, so they get greens. Um, ours really like romaine lettuce oh. uh, uh, of all the greens. We offer them a bunch of different kinds of greens, but kind of like your kids at home, they don't always like everything you offer them. Uh, so their favorite is romaine, but we do try to give them things like celery uh, and broccoli, even though broccoli is definitely not their favorite. Oh, um, well. But you try to give them <laughs> a little bit of variety. There's a lot of that going around. Yeah, I think it's a, a lot of parents can probably... Uh, relate now, to the broccoli thing now kids you eat your broccoli it's yes. one of the best it's a superfood so you eat your broccoli, broccoli is good for everybody grow up big and strong so dolly's gonna go check out and see what else we put on exhibit for everybody there goes dolly um, now is this uh now is she more social is that why she's here closer by the windows and these does, guys um everybody is fairly social because they all have personalities they right do. they're all very distinct with their personalities uh, these guys are 11 years old now, and they have been in a zoo since they were cubs. Right. Um, they, their mom uh, was a victim of a human interaction. Right. And the cubs came into a zoo uh, when their mom was uh, put down because of that. Right. Uh, so they've been around people a lot. Dolly's our smallest bear, and so she tends to be with us a little bit more. Um, just with her personality, she's kind of more personable. Now, uh, Coda's our big guy, and they're all siblings, so Coda's their brother, and if anybody has a big brother at home who kind of is rambunctious, 
and a little more overprotective. Uh, Coda does that too. And then Lou is the middle child. Lou's the middle child. <laughs> <laughs> and in some ways, she's very much the typical middle child. Hey, if you guys are a middle <laughs> child, give us a shout out, will you? We want to give some love to the middle kids. Um, my brother's the middle child, and I love him very much. Uh, I'm the oldest, so I can kind of relate to Coda. I too am the oldest. A lot. Uh, yes. <laughs> and kind of looking out for the little ones. Right, exactly. Um, even though they're all the same age, so we can step through here. So Janine, uh, we're looking at some natural feeding. Why don't we talk a little bit about we that? Are. So and why is, that's important and why they seem to love it. One of the things that we like to provide for our animals at the zoo, and I think we've done a Facebook Live with the lions. That's right, a few weeks ago. Um, so it's important for the lions and their pride dynamic. So with the grizzlies, uh, Coda's at the top. Uh, being the biggest bear, not because he's the brother or the I oldest. I see, okay. Um, and he's not the oldest, they're all the same age. We just kind of look at him as the big brother. Sure. Um, but he gets kind of the prime pick. Uh, but the girls also let him do the dirty work. So this was a deer. Uh, we have a partnership, we're really lucky, uh, with DWR. And they bring us uh, deer who just weren't able to survive in the wild. So this is a deer that was not suitable for human consumption. Oh, gotcha. Uh, it was very thin, just wasn't going to survive. Uh, deer can frequently make it through the winter, and then when spring hits and there's not food for them to eat, uh, they're just going to starve. Uh, and right. this is what grizzlies would be eating in the wild. In the wild. Um, they would find either a sick deer uh, to maybe kill or a deer that had already passed away. Uh -huh. And they would eat that in the spring along with the roots and shoots of uh, the plants that are coming up. So we'll see our bears dig a lot. If you're ever here at the zoo and you get to see our bears dig and eat at the grasses in addition to what we provide for them, that's also a natural behavior. Um, so what Code is gonna do is he thinks he's getting all the prime meat off of that deer. Oh. But I think what the girls are really allowing him to do is all the hard work. <laughs> I see. Boy, that, he's got his paw wrapped around he, that. He does have that paw and those deer. big nails, nails wrapped around it. Uh -huh. But he's also going to rip that hair off for them. And he's going to do all that really hard work and that messy work to get to the meat. So Lou's going to hang out with him and she's going to take kind of the next choice cut of the meat, Dolly's going to go and get all of her favorite snacks out of all that produce. So just like we have favorite foods, or not favorite foods like that broccoli, they have favorite foods in those snacks. So in that produce that we give them, we give them things like grapes. Our bears love grapes. Love grapes. So generally, Coda would eat all the grapes, but now Dolly gets all the grapes uh, while she's waiting. And she'll get some of the She'll try to grab a leg off of that deer, maybe when Coda's not looking, and then she'll go off and eat that. Uh, and that's what they would do in the wild. Uh, the Kind of the lower animal would take some of the scraps um, and some of those kind of lesser seen parts uh, from the bigger animal. Right. And Coda will let her, um, but he decided he's going to hide under the shelter today. Uh, but you can see they're all in there together working on that deer. Um, it's a smaller deer. I think this one weighed about 40 pounds. You can see it's not, not very large, but these guys will be working at it. Um, they'll be working through the skin and the hide, uh, which is good for their nails, good for their teeth. It'll give them something to work on. And um, they'll get a lot of really good meat off of that. Uh, and then they'll get all the organs out of there um, and the meat. You can see Dolly's working at it with her nails too. All the girls, the girls are both helping kind of tear that apart. Yeah, um, I noticed it was a whole deer, but the, the the head was missing. So you took that off, and uh, is there a reason for that? Is that always the case? Yes. So we, when we get the deer donated to us, uh, we'll do some field dressing and kind of clean it up a little bit, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then we take the head off uh, due to some chronic wasting disease that could be pop <laughs> that is um, possible in the deer population. I see, sure. So we don't want to transfer that to our captive uh, population here, our animals on exhibit. And then we just freeze it for 30 days oh, to uh -huh. possibly kill any of the parasites or just any biological issues we could right. have with the deer. Right. Um, and then we thaw it. <laughs> and it gets thawed just like you would thaw any of your food. Yep. 
um, that you get from the grocery store. So there's preparation just like we all do as we <laughs> get ready to prepare our meals. Yeah, exactly. But so. again, this is natural behavior. This is how they would feed in the wild coming across a, a, a dead deer, a dead deer. And, and so forth. And of course, greens and, and such as well. Yes, now, how exactly. often do they uh, do they get a deer and uh, do this natural feeding? So we, it depends. Uh, with the grizzlies, it's going to depend on how many deer we have uh, and how many deer get brought to us. Um, and then how many deer the lions need uh, for their pride dynamics. I, I see. So we have an inventory in the zoo and it's a whole inventory system. And right. we look at what the cat's needs are, uh, what our needs are. And then we actually regulate that with the temperature outside. Um, we don't want to invite things like yellow jackets, yes. which are just kind of gnarly creatures. Um, they have their own purpose in the ecosystem, um, but yes, we don't do. want to invite that to the bears because that's just <laughs> not a positive experience for them. And then when we have to clean up the mess, it's not a positive experience not for a positive us. <laughs> <laughs> so right. um, we try to make sure it's before the yellow jackets This come is out. kind of a perfect day then yeah, for so a natural a, feeding. A Overcast, a little cooler. Uh -huh. Exactly. Uh, and then a lot of it just has to do with what's going on with the bears. We want to make sure they're awake enough. Well, they're um, sure loving it, yes. but that's for sure. <laughs> uh, and then just today seems like a good day. Yeah. So we have to make sure we have a deer that's ready, you know, that's been frozen. And we just kind of plan it out and make sure we have room for thawing. Well, cause... it looks like it's a real treat for them. And they're all three of them are over there now and enjoying it. And, uh, of course, we got some magpies here yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, we have the best fed magpies. In I the think whole so. Zoo. If you're going to be a magpie, you want to live at Hogle Zoo. That's exactly. for sure. They're all very shiny. And I don't know how they fly sometimes because some of them look a little pudgy. So <laughs> now it's not unusual, pretty. folks, at Lions or here at Grizzlies that you'll see some natural feeding going on during your zoo visit, but we always have an A-frame out with signs that explains what's going on because we always like to give parents a little bit of a heads up what this is about uh, because it can be, you know, a little unnerving if you're not uh, aware of it. So, uh, uh, yeah, this is, this is just fascinating. And again, we're doing a lot of work here on grounds, getting ready to open for tomorrow. Uh, that's some of the noise that you're hearing and, and such, but uh, we're excited to welcome all of you back this summer as soon as tomorrow, yeah. May 2nd. Yeah. What else? What Do they get fish or anything Thank like so, that too, um, because uh, the Janine? Because grizzly diet naturally is very varied. Um, with them being omnivores, we do try to give them a wide variety of uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, we have a lot that we stock here at the zoo due to all the animals that we feed here. So we give them a variety that way. And then with their protein sources, uh, we try to vary that as well. Now so, I sh uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> so in Rocky How Shores, much do you think they go through in terms of produce and oh, such? Um, for them, at the height of the season, when they're kind of bulking up uh, prior to winter, They'll get about 10 pounds of fruit, 10 pounds of vegetables, and 10 pounds of greens a day. 10 pounds a day, so, Yeah, wow. <laughs> it's a lot. So we'll go through 30 pounds of total produce a day uh, for them, J just for them. So uh, the polar bears will also eat produce uh, throughout the day. And then uh, that's pretty much it for produce in Rocky Shores. Our otters will get the occasional carrot. Occasional um, carrot. Two for enrichment. But, but really, for, it's all about the bears it's when all it comes about to the, the produce. Bears. The they, pinnipeds, they get fish, they right? Get they, fish, how much then, fish do they go through? Um, same thing. So at the height, when they're getting the most, we'll go through about a hundred and some pounds oh, of fish for them a day. And that doesn't include when we're weighing out the fish for the polar bears. And then these guys will also get fish. So we go through herring, um, we can use snelt, we do squid, we do capelin, uh, we can do mackerel, we do salmon, uh, and that's everybody from the eagles all the way down to the grizzlies get fish in Rocky Shores. So we, we have a lot of mouths to feed here at the zoo. That's why your donations are so important to us. You'll see a donation button. Please donate. Even though we're opening, we still need revenue like crazy. We were closed for six weeks. So any contributions would be mightily appreciated. Someone's asking if they were fighting for food. Who's the question? Fighting for food? Um, our guys don't really fight for food. Sometimes you'll hear them grumble um, over each other, uh, over like favorite foods. So if we give them something we know they really, really like, 
Um, our guys, the Grizzlies especially, really like sweet things. Uh, so apples, oranges, uh, the grapes. So we make sure there's enough to go around. So there's never just one thing. Um, if we're training them, say with grapes, we make sure everybody gets grapes. It's not just one animal gets something. Sibling rivalry. Uh, sibling, yeah, sibling <laughs> rivalry. And so we kind of joke about the sibling rivalry, but we make sure everybody gets kind of equal amounts. Um, just like today, we put out enough food for everybody to get something and have enough of something. So even when Coda gets his fill, there'll still be enough of the deer to go around um, and he'll give pieces of the deer to the girls and everybody will be happy. Right. Um, <laughs> and probably very full. It'll be like Thanksgiving dinner where everybody kind of lays around afterwards um, and we'll make sure everybody gets enough food. Now, I, I want to mention before time gets away from us about a partnership we have called Wild Aware Utah. <laughs> Go to wildawareutah.org. A lot of good information. Now, even though grizzlies are no longer found in the state of Utah, black bears are, right, Janine? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, you know, why why is this relationship? Why, we have a lot of partners as part of Wild Aware Utah. Um, a lot of good information on that website about how to maintain distance and stuff. Talk a little bit about uh, about that and bear safety uh, and so Wild forth. Wild Aware Utah is actually one of my favorite websites. I am not from Utah. Uh, so Where are you from, Jenny? I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, wow. Um, You're a long way from home. I am a long way from home. <laughs> uh, but when I moved to Utah, that was one of the first websites. Uh, after I heard about it, uh, coming to the zoo, I checked out uh, because I'm not from Utah. Right. And... I wanted to take part in all of the outdoor activities that Utah has to offer and thought that that was the most fantastic <laughs> website oh. ever um, for a really great education on all the animals of Utah, how to interact with the wild, um, you know, it, safely. And it just tells you everything you ever needed to know. Um, I never... I mean, I came from a place that had venomous snakes, you know, when you went hiking. Right. Never thought in a million years it could <laughs> just be, you know, around the corner if I went hiking over uh, by the gardens. Yep. And I house it a lot. And so I'm kind of up by the canyons and just seeing things like moose. <laughs> and uh, it's really important to know how to be bear aware. Yeah. You know, um, black bears are very curious <laughs> and can come down. Uh, and check out your campsites, and it's important to put your food in bear safe containers. Right. Um, bears are very crafty. Uh, watching our guys, how they interact with their enrichment, and one of our goals uh, with enrichment, one of the biggest goals we have is to have them do natural behaviors. And seeing what these guys are capable of, I couldn't imagine encountering one in the wild but going imagine. to a website like wild aware utah helps prepare me for being out in the wild yeah and knowing what to do and it's a great time of year to talk about wild aware because as we get into the warmer months and everybody heads to the parks and up into the mountains you know and beyond that that you know humans now live in areas that used to be the domain and the homes of all these wild animals it's just human encroachment uh, and I know having grown up in Utah and the, the population has doubled over the last 20 plus years, you know, there, we're just finding more animals roaming into neighborhoods, cougars and such. You've seen a lot of that on the news. So uh, as the name implies, please be wild aware out there, folks, in your travels through the parks and hiking. We have the Bonneville Shoreline Trail across from the zoo, a lot of activity there. Yeah. Be aware of rattlesnakes and things and just leave them alone. If you leave them alone, they will leave you alone and that's i think the most important tip but go to wildawareutah.org a lot of good information at that side and we thank our partners for their support of of that wonderful initiative well they're still enjoying that that uh, deer over there for sure they are uh, and then what we will do with them for today usually we'll train them throughout the day um, give them more enrichment throughout the day we will actually leave them alone today uh, we will let them be bears today. Gotcha. And they will have this carcass for today. Um, they've already gotten other food. We've made sure that they just have everything they need for today. Um, this is their enrichment. They've got, you know, this carcass. They're going to work on that. They've got, like I said, everything they need for their day. And they're just going to be bears. Um, we'll keep checking on them, seeing how they do with that. 
seeing if there is every anything that they need, but they're they are occupied. <laughs> well, they're just striking animals. I love grizzly bears. Uh, these guys are so much fun to watch. And in fact, here at Rocky Shores, the grizzly exhibit, there's so many different uh, you know highlights and vantage points. You can see them nose to nose through uh, the, through glass. Uh, you can yeah, it has a wonderful overlook. Uh, which is great for photography. They they're fun when they're in the water splashing around. It's just uh, one of my one of my favorite exhibits at at Utah's Hogle Zoo, and it's also the Far West exhibit that you that we have at the zoo. Also, a little trivia uh, as well. Uh, so their names are Dolly, uh, Coda, and Lulu. Uh, Dolly is our smallest bear, and Lulu is kind of we call. It, kind of consider her the middle sister and then Coda's our male. Uh, Coda's been neutered so there will be no babies unfortunately. Oh, okay. And then Dolly's the bear. Uh, she's our smallest and she's the one with the small foot. Uh, a lot of people think she might be limping. Uh, she had an injury when she was very young so she actually has a very small leg. Um, on the back kind of like Finding Nemo. I did not know that. Yeah, we call it kind of like her lucky foot. Kind of how Finding Nemo. Uh, I learned Nemo so much. Little, yeah, the little fin. fin. Uh huh, the lucky <laughs> yeah, fin, right? She has a, a lucky foot. Um, yeah, so the there's back, a great way to distinguish foot. Dolly from the yeah, other she's two. Very tiny. There's another another animal that just showed. Yeah. <laughs> we feed everybody here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one big happy buffet. Exactly. That's how you know you have a healthy yeah. ecosystem. <laughs> we had Joe, age eight, ask earlier if you ever put fish in the pond for them to eat. We don't use live fish. Um, in Rocky Shores, but we do toss uh, some of the herring, some of the larger fish. Oh. That's easier for them to find uh, up in the more shallow part of their stream. So if you look at the kind of the, the grizzly stream, um, we've got the very top part, which is pretty deep. Coda likes to sit in it. We call it his hot tub. So okay. Nice. And then it becomes a stream and it's a little shallow. Uh, coming down kind of like a regular stream and then it gets really deep down here if you've ever seen the grizzlies play I have um, it's about many times feet, uh, yeah down in the deep part uh, but up where it's shallow where it's easier to kind of see we'll put bigger fish like herring uh, so that they have a chance to kind of hunt uh, and we'll also give them fish in enrichment devices so in toys where they have to kind of forage for them I see and make it a little bit more difficult to get out um, kind of like they would have to in the wild so no live fish, uh, but they do get uh, prepared fish. Hey, thanks to everybody for your donations. We sure appreciate it. Helps us a lot. Also, go to hogelzoo.org. A lot of fun opportunities there to support your zoo with some animal art, some illustrations of our various animals created by Jay Weston, our, uh, our art director here on staff. So uh, check that out. Also, what a great time to purchase a zoo membership with us opening tomorrow. Now's the time. So take advantage of that. And remember, if you're planning a visit to the zoo, you got to buy your tickets online. So go to hogelzoo.org for all your Hogel Zoo needs and any information that you need. Uh, ask about the Animal Art Week. Are we doing any more animal art this week? Someone just asked if we're doing more animal paintings and animal uh, art. All week long we've been doing animal art. Thank you for asking that question, and thank you for tuning in for all this wonderful animal art. We do animal art all the time up here. I don't, this is our, our, our last Facebook Live until next week. And then now that we're open, we don't know what the future of these field trips are gonna be. But certainly as time goes on, we'll be featuring more animals doing artwork throughout the zoo. And if you'd like one of these one of a kind pieces of art, go to hogelzoo.org to the online store. A lot of good information there. Oh, there he was again, he peeked dead. out. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. What a, what a great event. I hope you all found this interesting and even educational as the Grizzlies uh, went off and uh, are enjoying their, their wonderful meal of a local mule deer. <laughs> Looks like they're gonna be, uh, be involved for just, a little, <laughs> for just a little while. And then I suspect Janine, it's nap time, right? Yeah, for, oh, for yeah. them. <laughs> I think they're probably gonna settle down. It looks like there's rain coming, so they'll probably be hanging out in that it is. for a while. Yeah, it's a little overcast here in northern Utah for those of you not uh, tuning in from northern Utah, but uh, you know, that's what it's like in the spring. It could be snow one day and 80 degrees the next. Personally, are. I'll take the 80 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Well, I guess we'll wrap things up here, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you found this, as I mentioned, educational and interesting. I just love the grizzly bears. I hope they're one of your favorite species. They ought to be if they're not. Again, the zoo's opening tomorrow. Go to hogelzoo.org for all your information, all you need to know, all the various restrictions we have in place. Again, we want to take care of our guests. We want to take care of our staff and our animals. Uh, but that's not to say you can't enjoy a fun-filled day at the zoo. So check it all out. Purchase your tickets online. And we'll be back with Facebook Lives, guaranteed. So keep us handy. If you like what you've uh, seen today or any of our Facebook filters, be sure to share this content. We love it when it's shared. You can also find past Facebook field trips uh, on our Facebook page or on YouTube. Just, just type in Hogel Zoo and you'll see our YouTube page come up. So thanks again. You all be well out there. Stay safe.